Mr. Deke, all right. Welcome to the Monkey London Channel. Nice to meet you, mate. You come along from Cambridge. Cambridge. Yeah. And it should have taken you two hours, but how long did it take you? Four hours. <laughs> Do you like the M25? It's, well, it's all right. It's just the biggest car park <laughs> you can find. No, it's man. <laughs> you bought something pretty special today. Yeah. Yeah. The car's actually on your trailer. Yes. Because why, why is it on a trailer? Because it's got no aircon. <laughs> <laughs> and it's hot and the truck's got aircon, so it's, am it's I, am easier. I right in saying this is going to be probably the second road voyage of this car since you built it? Uh, yes, yeah, it's not been out too many times. Nah, you took no. it out with Martin who mapped it the other day. Yeah, we took it day. out um, on Monday and finished off some mapping um, because the first time we did it, I had boost creep. Ah, okay. So um, took it all apart, redid the manifold, bigger wastegate, rooted it better. Yeah. Um, so we went out the other day to set all the boost control up, which is now fantastic. And what so was it? What was it like? What was the first experience like? Uh, scary. <laughs> the video looks <laughs> interesting. Yeah, it's scary. <laughs> Let's just run through the essentials. Yeah. So it's a Honda Civic. Yeah. Honda EG. Civic EG 1993. Yeah. It's a, v it's a genuine VTI. So EG6 VTI. Cool. So it was a top of the range when I bought it um, before I decided to gash it up. Um, and quite, quite a rare car even in stock yeah, form. Yeah, it is, you know. Um, I've been trying to find another one to, to do a case swap in, but trying to find one is a decent one is hard. Yeah, they're, they're holding good money. Yeah, they are generally quite rusty. Yeah. Um, I did turbo it initially. I built it as a turbo project, turboed it. Didn't make the power I was hoping for. I drove this home got the angle grinder out and started cutting <laughs> it up, as you do. And plans sort of massively, <laughs> massively changed. Yeah, definitely. So in essence, this isn't front wheel drive anymore. It's no, now it's rear now wheel drive. It's now rear wheel drive, yeah. Do you want to just run us through some of the sort of custom drive train to sort of make it rear yeah. wheel drive? So if you actually want to just yeah, have, let's a have a little look. Yeah. Underneath, under here, we've got what used to be an MX-5 rear subframe. Um, it's been modified, obviously, to fit in here. Um, it's got a Nissan 350Z diff which I've obviously had to modify the subframe to get the diff in. Yeah. Um, obviously custom made drive shafts, which I don't know why they painted them red when I had them made, but you know. It does add five horsepower like. I'm told. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> had the wheels custom made. They are just Pro Race 1.2s, but I had them made in the correct offset that I wanted. Um, so they're actually nine inch wide on the back, seven on the front with 255 tires on the back. So quite quite a wide, quite a wide yeah. wheel. Yeah, because, um, and I went for 17s, originally it was 16, and sometimes from the back, the wheels do look a bit big because of the size of the car, but um, I have to, it's the only way I'd have any hope of getting any sort of traction on it whatsoever. <laughs> So you can't see it, but obviously under there we've got custom prop shaft, which is mated to the back of a uh, BMW gearbox. Okay, Z ZF box? Um, Get I, think it's, I think it's the ZF, yeah. I can't remember, it's a 320 diesel five-speed five gearbox, yeah. And obviously all the exhaust system, custom. I mean, everything really is, it, is not, been is kind of in-house. Yeah. I've got my own workshop and I've got a couple of mates with workshops next door and it's either been done by me in my workshop or at my house, or um, with a bit of help from, from the guys from next the door. Friends, yeah. That's the rear of the car, pretty much. Let's yeah. just have a look through Inside. the hatch, because that yeah. doesn't look conventional. Doesn't look normal. No. no, it's not. It needs a bit tidying up in there. I've got to get the, the springs re-powder coated. But um, as you can see, I didn't go for the conventional strut setup. I've gone for push rod with uh, inboard suspension and I'll be totally honest the main reason for it is I'm tight <laughs> it, it might sound odd saying that because this car's cost an absolute fortune, fortune to build yeah. but to get suspension that is as adjustable as that is standard motorbike suspension does it straight away oh, crazy that's, that's, mo that's and, motorbike shocks yeah so they're off my old Yamaha R6 um, that I turbocharged 
I then upgraded them, kept one of the old ones and then just bought another one so I could set a matching pair. And even these, these are actually off the R6 as well as are these dog bones. That, that was originally the dog bone that linked it all, which I've just cut in half and it gives me the support there in to then use the rockers for the push rod set up. What does it drive like on the road? Fantastic. <laughs> Martin, who mapped it, MB Automotive, even he was a bit sceptical. He thought, ah, oh, this is going to be such a hash up, this car. Um, but even when we drove, took it out the other day, he was extremely impressed with how well yeah. it drove. It actually does drive really well. And without sucking too many dicks, if he says it's good, it's good. Well, generally, yeah, because <laughs> he likes to speak his mind, yes. <laughs> and he's honest. Yeah. <laughs> if he thought it was dog shit, he you'd would definitely say. Yeah. So, yeah. Fair play, man. And, so, uh, and, and we've got all the custom yeah, fuel cell. Fuel cell, yeah, ATL fuel cell. It's only 40 litre. Which is another reason I didn't want to drive it here because you, you'd be stopping quite yeah. a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I think it does about five miles to the gallon. So, but yeah, we've got a little facet lift pump sucking it out of the tank, and then we've got a custom swell pot, swell pot with an 04 Bosch 044 oh, nice, um, yeah. pump, which you'll you'll certainly hear when we start it up. This has got to be my ultimate wet dream, <laughs> Civic, <laughs> and it's real drive. Yeah, there's not many of them out there, that's for sure, and uh. and none have been done this way. Everyone, I've seen a few, before I did it, I'd seen the odd one, and you'd either got, someone has got a S13, um, lobbed the floor pan out and welded it in, so it's full S13 running gear, including the engine, which I really hate, I'm not an SR fan. The other one I've seen is obviously S2000. This car, apart from this tiny bit at the back, is still virtually Civic chassis. So, even the, the transmission tunnel, all I literally did was chop the original tunnel and then raise it up. Yeah. So the original floor pan, seat mounts, everything is all original Honda. The car is now off the train. Just show us how you start it. Oh, we've got a lovely flop dash as well. Yeah. Very race car in here, man. Kill switch. Ignition to the lovely quiet fuel pumps. Doesn't sound very VTEC-y, but we'll go on to that in a second. Yeah, <laughs> I've disabled the VTEC. <laughs> While you're in the interior, yeah. Deke, just run us through some of the um, interior bits. You've obviously got a digital so, dash. So, yeah, got an AIM Strada dash with a little Honda badge on there, as you do. Oh, just turn it on. That. Yeah, that's cool, man. Sparco steering wheel with a little snap-off boss. Purely just to make it easier for getting in and out because it's quite tight with these seats. Yeah. This here is the cow switch for your different settings for boost, anti lag, that sort of stuff. And what ECU is it running? That's Cyvex S6. Cyvex S6. So yeah, it has, it has got um, anti lag. What horsepower did it make? So it made 100 and. So, 100? 100? <laughs> <laughs> in stock form. On each cylinder. No, it, didn't, it made even more than that. Even more than that, yeah. Um, it made 501 on the dyno. You said you had quite high intake temperature. Yeah, it was 60 day. degrees. The ambient temperature was 37.5 degrees. So intake temperatures were very high, much like today. As you can probably see, it's quite, mm, it's quite, it's quite hot. Muggy. We'd um, like to think probably maybe 530, 540 horsepower. Yeah, at, at the right um, intake temperature, it's probably somewhere in that region, yeah. And what boost was that at? Uh, two bar. Two bar of boost. Yeah, because okay. it's um, it's relatively low compression. So. And have you got boost boost by gear or is it straight two no, bar? No, not boost the... by gear. So low settings, 1.3, um, higher settings, two bar. two bar. But in all honesty, it put the power down surprisingly well. Fingers crossed today. It's a bit grey. Yeah. Kind of the, re the weather's a bit on and off today. It's very warm, but it's a little bit wet. Well, but fingers crossed it stays dry. Yeah, let's hope. Do you bring those spare tyres? No. <laughs> right, let's show you guys what's under the hood, or the bonnet as you say in the UK. Let's break the, we're gonna break the internet now, I think. So the first thing I can spot is that it doesn't say Honda on the top. It no. says Saab. I know a little bit about these engines because I want to put one in my Calibra. I'm not going to talk yeah. about the Calibra because that's quite frankly embarrassing compared to this car. <laughs> <laughs> but this is it's a got, Saab. It's got potential. 
I yeah, nearly built one once. I changed my mind. Yeah, you used to be a bit, bit of a voxel nut, didn't I you? I was back in the very day? much so. Yeah, I've built many voxels in my time. Yeah. Now you're very familiar with the Saab motors because you yeah. used to actually be a Saab mechanic. I was a Saab mechanic, yeah, for yeah. 14 years. Yeah. So it's a B204 block, which has now got a B234 crank in it. So technically, it's some would say it's a, two, a B234. Um, it's also got a set of forged rods, forged pistons. Um, common mod on one of these is Volvo valve springs because they're a direct fit they're better than the standard ones okay. but they're cheap so it's got them in it it's got a set of custom cams in it um, fully balanced um, rotating assembly um, it's also got which you wouldn't normally see I've modified it and it's now running a cam sensor so I've got fully sequential ignition and injection this is a homemade tubular manifold that I made myself Tobo Smart 45mm hypergate wastegate Garrett GTX 3071R Gen 2. Nice, very quick spooling turbo. Yeah, so it's got the 875 Deca injectors, homemade also inlet manifold, which is a WRC style. And it's also now running drive by wire. So instead nice. of a throttle cable, it's yeah. drive by wire using a Vauxhall Astra VXR, I believe, um, throttle body. We've got homemade intercooler pipes, um, using all AN, AN lines and everything for the boost control, um, which, is a rather expensive way of doing it I'm not going to lie but, but it, just, it, but it, so it much it's more yeah it's better it's nicer they don't just pop off like your silicon hoses can at times yep. um, then on the cooling side this is just a Mazda MX-5 alley radiator with the shroud on it as well yep. a lot of people forget that just shove the fans on there but it just doesn't yeah just to it help doesn't cool as well and then on the front there we have just got a jack speed I believe it is um, front mat intercooler, intercooler okay. three inch inch ends on it and it's quite cool as well because you kind of got it right to the edge yeah, and you, and you made, sealed made it all the up bumper to seal it off so that the air yeah. is actually forced to go through it and um, because obviously we want as much cooling going through there for the intake temperatures but also for the radiator yeah. and the oil cooler which is just tucked tucked down inside there as well just to keep quick little look oh yeah and you got the oil cooler there yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. Cool, what about the engine mounts Steve? Um, what are they from they are land rover defender um polybush Random. There's so many sort of cool yeah. different parts of yeah. this, isn't there? Just find what you can use because it's all custom. You just find a bit that looks like you can utilize it and then you make your brackets and stuff around it. Yeah. So. What about the ignition coils as well? They are from a Toyota Yaris. As I said earlier, these normally have a coil pack, but the only reason in reality I didn't use that was because I mounted the engine so far back, there was actually no room to fit it on. Yeah. So I went for individual coil anyway. Um, and then this is quite a common used coil for aftermarket applications because they're, they're cost effective yeah. they're reliable e so easy to obtain as well yeah exactly because it is sort of quite close to the um the bulkhead isn't it's it very very there. close yeah. yeah and you've got like a sort of some sort of heat um, yeah so i've got some heat protection down there because it does create a hell of a lot of heat yeah as you can imagine it's and not the smallest turbo in the world no it's actually it's a it's a pretty large turbo that it is yeah. yes it sounds it's, quite nice especially at two bar yeah. And the great thing with those GTX is they're super quick spooling. Oh you know? yeah, it, it spools pretty. Even pretty on good. idle, you sort of touch a throttle and you're gonna kind of hear them spool. Yeah, 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 definitely. <laughs> what about the front suspension as well? So the front suspension is, to all intents and purposes, standard with Honda. So the, it's got standard Honda struts, it's got aluminium Honda lower arms, but then the rear portion of the arm, because normally that would have had a, I don't know if you know much about Honda arms, but they're two piece, the back half bolts on. Well, I've removed that and I've actually made myself a spherical bearing rear, oh. rear arm so I can adjust the caster, because cool. it, with it now being rear wheel drive. Yeah, um, so that part is, is separate. Also the engine cradle, which is actually originally a 200SX S14, which I've grafted into the original Honda suspension, and then I've come forward and turned it into a complete subframe. Right. So it's now also houses the front anti-roll bar, which otherwise I'd have nowhere to mount. So huge amount of forward thinking in this car. Yes, yes, it's not simple. You know, at first you think, oh, I'll make it rear-wheel drive. That's easy. Just turn the engine around and <laughs> dig, you go. dig a tunnel. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's not not quite that straightforward. Yeah, because that's so, what's so unique. You open the engine bay up, and obviously, if you haven't spotted the rear drive shaft, you've got the engine sitting well longitudinal, not trans transverse. Transverse. Yeah, exactly. Very so, crazy, man. 
Yeah. Let's just go through the bodywork. I mean, it's predominantly sort of standard looking, yeah, relatively speaking. Basically, I wanted to keep it as stock looking as possible, um, but it's just got, I think it's a Mugen replica. Lip on the front. Lower lip. Yeah. The side skirts are standard. Down the sides, you've just got the recesses have been smoothed out and the trim's taken off because yeah. I didn't really want those on there. And also the um, the fuel cap's yeah. missing. Fuel filler is now gone. That used to be here somewhere. It's got carbon spoiler. I'm not sure what brand it is, but probably a cheap eBay one. I bought it off a mate for 30 quid, I think. That's the job. <laughs> the brakes are, the, the rear has got obviously MX-5 brakes, which are on the axle, but I've actually upgraded them to the later larger disc, um, which has just meant some caliper adapters, which moved them all out. But obviously everything was new, new calipers, new bearings, new everything. It's actually, you can't quite see them, but it's actually got some Driftworks upper arms on there as yeah, well. Yeah, I saw, for, I saw the orange. For, for the camber adjustment, so. Not something you expect to see on the back of a Civic. No, definitely not. Strange. Um, so that's the rear. <laughs> on the front? So we've got a set of Case Sport 330s on the front, eight pots, the later forged type ones. And floating discs as well? Yes, yeah. Separate bells and rotors, yeah. What does the car roughly weigh? Dude? So it's ele just under 1,100 kilos. Okay. So it's around about the same as what a stock one is but obviously with it now being rear wheel drive. So you've got a bit more weight because you've obviously got the gearbox and the diff separate, but obviously the weight generally is distributed better because yeah. it's at the back. I think when we also did it, the cross weight was almost 50% split. So 50-50. So it worked out pretty well. Really good, I mean, yeah. I didn't necessarily plan it that way. <laughs> it worked out that way. I'm excited, dude. I think next up, I think we should take it for a drive. Yeah, let's do it. Do you trust me? You trust you. <laughs> I trust you more than I trust me. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Cool, it's loud in here. So we will do our best with talking. Yeah. But I think we'll let the car make most of the music today. Yeah. <laughs> swap over. Deke's feeling very trusting. Yeah. We've got to be a little bit careful because he literally has just built this car and you've only had a few goes in it and I want you to have a few more goes. <laughs> <laughs>
horsepower. It would be funny and fun, but it wouldn't yeah. get the traction that this no, does. No. Wastegate has definitely changed colour. All these fittings were black. <laughs> Same as that. We have a little bit of heat. That's why I'm going to get John drive the car, Deke. Yeah. <laughs> no, John is. I've just met him. I <laughs> yeah, what a car, man. Honestly, I couldn't. It was quite hard to speak while I was driving it because I was quite sort of shocked. I was, like I said in the camera, I was kind of expecting it to be not undrivable, but I didn't think it would be quite so taut. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's actually very controllable. It'd be nice to see, like you said, once you've got a proper limited slip diff in yeah, there. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, but yeah. God. Diff and a sequential gearbox. Diff, sequential, and some sort of cooling aids for the drive yeah, for the yeah. driver and the passenger. But no, uh, considering you've done that to... all yourself with the help of your friends, man, ten out of ten. That really is a cool car. And you know what? I've never given anyone a score of twenty out of ten for an ML car review, <laughs> but you, sir, have just achieved it. Well done, man.